Okay, now we're going to do the shingling. And the shingling is the part that adds the most to this birdhouse. It makes it look the, uh, the way most people think makes it so cool. Okay, now when you do your shingling, you obviously have two sides of the roof that you've got to shingle. This is the easy side because you don't have anything in the way. You're just going to run five rows of shingles all the way up to the top. Okay, I would suggest that you do this side first. Okay, but I'm going to do this side so that I can show you how you work around the dormer, or two dormers if you happen to have two. The principle is exactly the same, you just won't need to cut anything on this other side. Okay, what you're going to use is this material that has that started out the same thickness as these big pieces on your house. They were cut to about two or two and an eighth inches wide, and then we cut them again on the bandsaw so they were really thin. Now, some pieces are thinner than others. Some of them are a little bit angled. Okay, they're all the same width. Some of them get a little bit skinnier. <clears throat> okay, that's okay because real shake shingles or split shingles, cedar shingles are that way. Okay, the nice thing about it being this way is you can see that the grain on the shingles runs this, this direction. And you always want the grain to run down your roof. Don't make a mistake and hook a shingle on this direction. Okay. You're going to put them all on this way, but we want them to vary in their size and their position. This makes it really nice. You won't have to cut any shingles, except maybe the last one on each side to get them the right size, because you can just snap them with your fingers. Okay? So you pick a piece and you start. Now, people ask me, students ask me all the time, do you want them to overlap? You can overlap them, stick them off the edge just a smidge if you really want to, or you can make them perfectly even, but do not set them back. Make sure that they stick over, if anything. Okay, I'm going to make mine stick over just the teeniest bit. Okay, now to mount the shingles, the first row is easy because they're going to be perfectly flat right against this. And I use glue when I do this because sometimes the nails don't hold all that terribly well. So I put a strip of glue on the top and a strip of glue on the bottom of the shingle. I set that shingle into place, getting my overlap if that's what I want. Okay. Now, it's not going to stay there very well if you let go of it. It'll have a tendency to want to slide down the roof. So what you're going to use is the staple gun. Now, before, when we were stapling the base, we used staples that were an inch or an inch and a quarter long. This time, we're only going to use staples that are about half of that length. And the reason we're using that is so they don't go through the roof. And if they do go through the roof, they don't go through very far. We're going to, to staple all the way at the top of the shingle. And the reason we're going to do that is because we want the next row of shingles to cover the nails or the, the staples so that they cannot be seen. Line your shingle up, push in there, and just give it a light pull on the trigger. Okay, notice how high the staples are. Okay, now we do that with a couple of different pieces of shingling. Now this one, you notice we're starting to get kind of close, so I'm going to break off a smaller shingle this time. And when I mount this one on there, I'm going to, even though it was the piece that originally hooked to this, so the lines match perfectly, I'm going to leave just a little bit of a separation so that you can actually see the joint. Okay? And again, get the exact same amount of overlap. Don't vary it. Get it exactly the same. Once you've got it to where it overlaps exactly the same, and you've got it straight on there, I'm just going to put one staple into this one. Sometimes I have to put a little weight in my birdhouse to hold it in place. Okay, and I pull the trigger. So you can still see that little gap in there. Now, to work around, now if you were doing this on the other side, you just relay your first row all the way across. But we've got the dormer in the way, and you can see that the shingle actually hits the dormer and causes it to overhang. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out our gap. We're just going to leave the shingle a little bit low. We're going to figure out our gap, and we're just going to make a mark with a pencil right next to that dormer. And then we're going to bring it over here, and we're going to figure out how much we actually have to cut off to get that overlap. And we're going to cut it right snug up to the bottom. So I know that I've got to cut this teeny little piece out of here. Now you can do this by hand. You can get a razor blade. Utility knife and cut it off, or you can do it on the bandsaw. You just have to be very careful because you're going to be putting your fingers very close to the bandsaw, and that's not a good safety practice. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it by hand with my razor saw right here. And the easiest way to do that and protect 
the shingles so that I don't break it is to put it in the vise like this. I turn my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm just going to put that in the vise so that the part I need to cut is hanging over the end. And then I'm just going to put my old razor saw on there, my lines on the back side. And I just very gently, remember these break really easily. Okay, saw cuts on the full stroke. I'm going to come down here to where the, uh, the line is for the cutoff so that when I hit it, the piece pops out and I know I'm done. Okay, and I'm just going to cut, following that little line, all the way down until I get to that little cross cut and the piece pops out. And now I have this little Utah-shaped piece of shingle right here. Set that on here and it fits nice and snug right up against the dormer and allows me to see this gap right here. So I put my glue on there and I'm going to nail this. Now when I nail this, I want to avoid nailing out here where it's going to be seen if I can. Okay, so I'm going to pull that out there and I'm going to shoot a staple right in there and that should be enough to hold it in place. Okay, now I would do the exact same thing on the other side. I would do the exact same thing on the other side and continue my row across here. You should end up with a perfectly straight line at the tops of your shingles. Now, once you have done that, okay, in this case gone all the way around, you're going to lay your next row of shingles. This time I want to start with a smaller shingle. The trick with shingling is to make sure that your gaps never line up. So this time I'm going to break the shingle smaller and I'm going to set it over here. You can see they don't line up. Now, here's the important part. All of your overhangs, okay, the part of the shingle that shows is called the reveal. We want to make sure that the reveal is the same on every row of shingles. So it's really important that at this point, once you have your first row on, that you take these other shingles and you lay them out dry, that means with no glue and not nailing them, and make sure that your overlap and your reveal are exactly the same on all of them. Your goal is going to be to get all the way to the top using the exact same amount of reveal. Okay, so you want it to go all the way to the top. Okay, tip the camera up a little better so you can see it. Okay. Now you can see that I have the exact same amount of reveal on all these shingles. Now the top one you see the full shingle, but that's okay because we're going to put a little molding piece across the top of it that'll even out its reveal. Okay. Once you know how much reveal you're going to use, then shingle that I dropped here. Once you know how much reveal you're going to use, you should make a little mark on your roof like this, and then you'll want to use a square, and you'll want to make your line go all the way across your roof. Now with the uh, dormer, it's a little bit more difficult, okay? But you want that line to go all the way across. So the suggestion would be that you measure from the bottom of your roof up to where that first line is. And in my case, it's three and five eighths. And then you turn the house and you come over here and find your three and five eighths and make a mark on your roof and do the exact same thing over here so that they line up with each other. If you don't do this, you will end up with crooked shingles and crooked shingles look really bad. Okay, so now I have the line drawn all the way across the roof on both sides. Now I know that whatever pieces of shingle I put on here, they are going to hit right on that line and that's why it's so important that you that you do your nailing across evenly. Now, when I can put this one on, I'm going to put glue at the top of the shingle, but I'm not going to put any down at the bottom. If I put it down on the bottom, it will have a tendency to run out over. If you do decide you really want to put some glue on the bottom part of that shingle, you just can't put very much because you don't want it to run out on top of the other shingle. Line the top up. If you've got an overhang, give yourself a little overhang. Line that up and shoot your staple.
Okay? Avoid using too many staples. If your staple goes in and it splinters it out, it means the air pressure is too high or the, uh, the gun is shooting too deep. Okay? If the gun is pushing the, sh the staple head too far in, there's a little wheel right here below the trigger that you can turn one way or the other and it controls how deep the staple goes. Okay? Do the exact same thing with your next shingle. This time we're going to make a slightly bigger one. Okay, and what I'm looking for on my shingle is I want to make sure that I have the side that the saw cut. So you have these lines running down the shingles and it looks like it has been split because the old-fashioned shingles were split and not cut. Okay, again, I put my glue up on the top. Remember, the middle part of the shingle doesn't even touch the roof because it's up on top of the shingle below it. Okay, and I'm going to shoot another staple. Now you can put two staples in or just one. I'm trying to avoid having too many, so I'm just going to do one because that seems like that will hold pretty well. Okay, now I take my next piece. Now here's where you may have to do a little bit of cutting. Okay, you line your shingle up right here, figure out how big it needs to be, and then you break it. And chances are you're going to end up with it being a little off. This one is too small, doesn't reach the dormer. This one is too big. So what I need to do now is I need to turn my shingle over, and I'm just going to make a little mark both at the top and at the bottom. Okay, and <coughs> you can try, if you have a big enough area, to leave yourself a little bit of an L shape down here at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to run my line down, and then when I get to the place where my dormer comes in, I can cut a little L shape on there. Okay, so I'm going to transfer that on this side. Okay, and again, I'm almost cutting a little Utah-shaped piece, just got a longer gap. Yeah, I'm going to take my saw right here, and then I'm going to cut. Okay, and then it cuts on the pull stroke only. Okay, so I'm going to cut that down until I get to where the two lines meet. Stick it in my vise. You won't be able to see it. Stick that in there and get Cut me in there. Then I'm going to cut my long piece. Turn this down again so you can see it. Okay, you want to pull straight down. Remember, this is the side that's going against the dormer. Okay, I can only cut so far. And then I'm going to have to lay this on the table right here. And it might be a good place to use a razor blade or a knife. Okay, if you use a razor blade, you can just stick that razor blade right in there and right by the cuts, pull down this way and you can finish your cut out that way. Okay, you could do the entire thing with the razor blade. Now, when I stick that in there, it goes around and creates just a little bit of an overlap there, which is going to be nice. Okay, so I put some glue on the top of the shingle and I staple it into place, making sure that I follow my line. Okay? So now I've got my little L shape right here, got it up against my line, and I shoot my staple in, and voila. Okay, now you can do the exact same thing working on the other side. Bring your next level up, draw the next line, and build all your shingles across the top. So I'm going to do that very quickly, and we'll come back. All right, now you can see that I brought the shingles clean up to where we have now to worry about going around the roof of the dormer. It's not a terribly difficult thing. One of the things that you need to be ready for is that you will break some little pieces of shingle. Okay, when I was cutting this one over here, I broke this little nub off two or three different times before I finally got one. That's just the way it is. Well, now what I'm going to do right here is I will end up taking a little piece that I cut off the bottom of one of the shingles that fits in there and I'll just very lightly glue that in place and hold it with a piece of tape so I don't have to shoot a nail through it. Okay, what I'm going to do right here now is I'm going to I've got this shingle broken and I need to put it in here. I want to cut a shingle big enough to go from wherever I happen to be in here to reach all the way over and touch this wall. Okay, so I'm going to flip the shingle upside down and I'm going to mark that I need to, I'm going to end up needing to cut about this much of the shingle off so that it will fit. Okay. <clears throat> um, and now might be a 
good time to do that. If you cut this with a razor blade, uh, it has a tendency to work pretty nicely. Okay? I wouldn't suggest doing it on your roof, but I'll do it here so you can see it. Take a sharp razor blade and just score along the line that you need to go through. It should break off relatively easy. I'll give it one more deeper one down here. And then we can just snap that little piece off. So now that's going to fit right in there. Okay, now I'm going to measure where it is I need to cut to go underneath the roof. Okay, and it's going to need to be about that high. Then I'm going to put this in place and I'm going to mark from this corner up to here and realize that that's where my corner is going to have to be. Okay? And then I'm going to bring this over and it's not quite going to touch. Okay? So I'm just going to kind of guess as to how far that needs to be. So if I cut this line from here down to about here, okay, I should go right around my roof. And should be the angle should match halfway as decent if we've done that right. Okay? And it kind of looks like I may need to go here a little bit more than that. Okay? Better to cut it too small the first time than to cut the opening too big. You can always go back and make it bigger. Okay? Now this may be a good place to use the bandsaw unless you're good with the, the razor blade. I'm going to go ahead and do this with the razor blade. And hopefully we have success. Cut that line out of there, a little triangle, and every shingle will be a little bit different, so you'll just kind of have to play with this until you get it to work. Okay, here's what I was talking about with the breaking. You can see that I broke my little piece off right here. That's not an incredibly big deal. This is what I have to worry about more. You can see I did not quite go far enough out. Okay, so I'm going to make a little more of a mark. It's got to come down into here. And it's to come a little further, a little sharper angle. Out to here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off. too big of a gap, but it doesn't quite touch the roof, you're okay because you are going to come back and uh, put shingles on the dormer as well, so they'll overlap this place a little bit. Okay, so now I've got that piece cut right there to go around, and I can just take that little piece that I broke off, and uh, we'll just put a dab of glue on that and stick that right back into place. So I'm going to glue and nail my shingle. Okay, get that right in there. And obviously the neater the, the, neater the line you cut, the better off you are. And again, make sure you're following your line. Okay, now I can just take this little piece that I broke off, just put a little dab of glue on that, and slide that carefully. Okay, now you'll do the same thing coming up with your last row. You'll bring, in, bring the shingles all the way over here and just cut your angle. And if you can, use one piece that you cut a triangle out to mate around this. And make sure it goes all the way to the top and your reveal is the same all the way around. Okay, once you've accomplished that, then you do the same thing. Put a full shingle on your dormer piece. So you put maybe two pieces that go all the way to the top on here, and then we'll take the same molding piece that we're going to put across here, which will be one of these shingles, cut in half or in thirds, all the way down in a strip that we nail one to each side and overlap. Okay, we don't break them into little shingles. We just nail them in 